You're listening to Caldo Gospel Radio. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Monday night prophetic glory, breakthrough, healing and deliverance with Prophetess Carol Galloway every Monday night at 8 p.m. right here on Called Out Gospel Radio. Tune in for the hour has come to be resuscitated, revived and restored. Monday night prophetic glory with Prophetess Carol Galloway right here on Called Out Gospel Radio. Tune in and be blessed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Bless the name of the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy, holy, precious name. Father, I thank you again for this night. Uh, that you've allowed me to be back on radio, God. I thank you, Lord God, because this is a night that I come to give you glory. This is a night the list give you glory, Father. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, that my voice can be heard in the earth by means of this radio station. Thank you, God, for the owners. Thank you, Lord God, for called out gospel radio, the host, Bishop and Minister Oliver. Father, I continue to decree and declare favor over these young men and this young woman's life and their family and this radio ministry, Father. I continue to to speak blessings over them and I continue to call on the heavens for expansion for this ministry. So I decree and declare complete expansion in this 2021 for called our gospel radio father i just thank you lord god because your blood right now is covering this line i thank you lord god for the listeners that are going to hear my voice tonight lord god those god that are not saved it's the ones that are not saved father that you have sent us to go and to look for father god yes we are to care about those that are saved but god we are to we are to be going to look for the lost we are to be feeding those that are weak and young in their salvation but going after the loss and tonight i pray for that soul that's listening tonight lord god that doesn't know you that soul that's afraid that soul god that's it's at their end father where they're in a their back is against a wall father and they don't know which way to turn god that's the soul that i'm reaching out to tonight and if it's you i pray that you hear my voice tonight and that you heed to the voice of the lord father i pray tonight that they will surrender to you i pray god that those that are in any suffering those that are broken hearted so many people in this world tonight and today ah, their hearts are broken they are burdened down they are sick father but tonight I plead the blood of Yeshua over their lives over their situation over their heartbreak over their sickness tonight father I pray God tonight that you will send your healing power father to heal your brother heal your brothers heal your sisters heal your daughters heal your son heal your children father in the mighty name of Yeshua father so many people tonight are under demonic influence father so many people tonight are, are are being cursed they're under some form of a demonic attack and i decree and i declare tonight that that demonic uh, decree that demonic attack that demonic influence that's over your life that demonic word that's been spoken into your life that demonic prayer that's been prayed over your life i decree and i declare tonight by the power from the heavens that it be broken and destroyed by the fire of god tonight in the mighty name of yeshua Lord God, I pray your people receive salvation. I pray that they receive restoration, they receive liberty and I pray tonight will be their exodus just like the children of Israel, Father when they left. Ah, we just thank you tonight, Lord God. Ah, I pray tonight, Lord God, that somebody will, 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 will exit tonight out of their, their, their heavy laden um, issues that they're having, Father. Somebody will, be, will, be, will break out of jail tonight. Somebody, Father, will have a prison break tonight in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father, I say that it is done and i thank you again it may not be monday night people of god but it is thursday night and i am here by the power of the lamb of god and father i just thank you 
I bless you and I give you praise and I say amen. Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to, I would say, Thursday Night Prophetic Glory because it's not Monday. And make sure that you continue to tune in every Monday night at 8 p.m. right here on Call Out Gospel Radio where you will you will have none other than myself and you will get to be a part of Monday Night Prophetic Glory. But tonight we're going to call it Thursday Night Prophetic Glory. I am your host, Prophetess Galloway, hailing to you all the way from South Florida. God bless you and I greet each and every one of you in the precious name of Yeshua. The ministry's assignment is to cause man's um, heart to be resuscitated, to cause you to be revived, restore, and 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 and, and for that fire of Elohim that 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 once was in you you were born with it and it was once in you but it may have gone dim it may have blown out it may be it may be lit but it's not it's not burning to its full potential and the ministry's assignment is to cause that fire to begin to burn back into your heart hallelujah if you would like for me to pray with you tonight on air i am available um, at the end of tonight's um, session, you can dial in, um, use your WhatsApp because it is a, an international number. It is 876-770-9553. Again, that number is 876-770-9553. You can dial in and I will be available towards the end of the program to pray with you um, live on air. If you are shy and you don't want to come live on air, it's okay. I used to be shy once upon a time. You you can text the station at 876-868-5109. One more time. 876-868-5109. You can also text me on WhatsApp. Uh, my number is 754-303-8127. Or you can send your, your prayer request um, directly to my email, which is pgrestorationministry at gmail.com. One more time, PG Restoration Ministry at gmail.com. You are also invited to our Bible studies every Tuesday night at 8.30 and our prophetic prayer encounters that we have on Thursdays, some Thursdays, and on, always on Saturday nights at 9 p.m. You can do that by dialing in at 425-436-6326. 425-436-6326. And that code is 168-173-POUND. 168 173 pound. Now, I want to thank all the Ark of God's Mission Prayer Line Warriors and my friends and family for sowing into prophetic glory and restoration global ministry. Your contributions is what allows the listeners to hear what the Lord has to say through me. And I pray that the Lord always return to you a hundredfold and more. Now, I want each and every one of you that are hearing my voice, those of you that are out on social media, good night to each and every one of you. I want you all to yield your minds, yield your bodies and your souls to hear what the only wise God has to say to you all tonight. Bless the name of the Lord. Tonight, my topic is, is it's time to advance the kingdom. It's time to advance the kingdom. And I'm going to be coming um, from two passages of scriptures, but we're going to start off first at Matthew twenty-two, fourteen. Tell somebody it's time to advance the kingdom. And we're not talking about any other kingdom, but the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what we're talking about tonight. So we want to advance the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 22, verses 14 tells us, for many are called, but few are chosen. For many are called, but few are chosen. I'm going to say that one more time. For many are called, but few are chosen. So what is God saying to us here? So many people, so many of us have been called, but it's really a few of us that has really been chosen. God has a chosen people that he has strategically set that guess what? No matter, see all where the beginning of that scripture where it says for many are called, a lot of us are called. But we're, not, we, we're either not answering or we're hiding, we are running, we're doing everything but but answering. Sometimes we answer, but then when we answer and we said, yes, Lord, I will, then we, we, we revert back and we don't do everything that God has called us to do or we do it halfway. The Bible says, for many are called, but a few are chosen. So even though so many of us have been called, it's a few of us that no matter what we do, hey, we will not get away. Because we are chosen. So we can run, we can hide, we can skip, we can, we can do whatever it is that we want. But we are chosen. So those of us that are chosen, no matter what you do, ha, God is going to catch up to you. Right? 
because he's the one that he can, he can run the race better than any of us. And he will always catch up to you. So you can think that you are hiding. You could think, oh, I'm going to take this path and um, God is not going to see me. Or I'm, I'm going to hide um, on the usher board and God is not going to see me. Or I'm going to I'm going to hide as the janitor who's going to clean the church. But um, and that's where I'm going to hide because I really I'm hiding because I don't want to preach. Um, let me let me just tell you right now. For many are called. But few are chosen. So matter, no matter what you do, because you are chosen, you are going to do what God has called you to do. So keep running. God has given us a vantage point. You know, when the enemy goes out to war, uh, when, 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 when there's two sides that go out to war, whether it's the enemy or wh whether it's the, the, the good or the evil, right? They go out to war. And someone always has a vantage point on the other. And the person, the, the, the side that has the vantage point, they have the better opportunity. And so we have a vantage point because we were not just born and just blind to, to everything. God has given us a vantage point with his word. And God has called so many of us, but he has chosen a few of us. And I want, I want to talk to us tonight because Ephesians chapter four, verses 11 and 12, a very common, um, passage of scripture that I'm sure everybody knows and because you know we we love to quote these these um these scriptures but we don't want to we don't want to walk in the scripture we don't want to we don't want to do what the scripture says we don't we don't want that to apply to us but we want to we want to be able to to um to say the scripture Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 says and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I'm going to stop right here just really quickly as I'm hearing the spirit of the Lord when he's as he's speaking. I'm just going to say what I'm hearing him saying. You know, many people that you will find in this world today will tell you, oh, um, those were things of the old and um now that those apostles and those prophets have, have died off, God has, there's no more apostles and there's no more prophets and there's no more, um, th th there's no more evangelists. Like, okay, so who is going to bring order? Who is going to speak what thus saith the Lord? Who is going to go out and evangelize to the people? Who's going to shepherd and who's going to teach if that has been done with from years ago when the apostles and the, and the prophets died out? Who's going to do that today? Can you imagine? We, we already live in a world that doesn't even have that much order. Can you imagine if there was no order in Christendom? Can you imagine how we would just be a wild bunch of uh, of of like like cows in a field, just just wild or wild boars in a field? We would just be wild. And so God had to choose, and that's why He says few are chosen. He had to choose and give a vantage point to the chosen, so that. For, for the perfecting of the saints because there are still saints that need to be perfected. It's not the saints of, 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 of old. The saints of today still need perfecting. For the work of the ministry, there's still work in the ministry to be done. So the, the ministry work was not when Jesus was in the earth. The ministry work continues. For the edifying of the body of Christ, why do we need to be edified? We need to be edified because we live in sin and this flesh wrestles against our, 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 our spirit day after day after day. So this, we need to be edified as a body of Christ. So when I hear people saying, well, those people are dead and those people are no longer necessary in the earth. The devil is a liar. We are all called to salvation and to serve. But few, few of us are chosen and given the gift to lead. We are all called to salvation and to serve, but a few of us are chosen and given the gift to lead. See, when I, when I said earlier that it's time to advance the kingdom, to advance is to move forward in a purposeful way. So I'm here tonight to speak to those that are unaware, the one, the, those of you that are hiding, those that are non-operational, those that are running, um, those that God has chosen, the few that he has chosen to be the, to be apostles, to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be pastors, to be teachers and bear in mind, God didn't say in his word that you had to have that title um, next to your name 
or you had to be um, ordained um, or, you know, licensed. He didn't say that. He said, for many are called, but a few are chosen. God is the one that has already chosen you. Yes, there's going to be um, a leader in your life that's going to not recognize your gift in the earth and, 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 and will probably most likely have a, uh, uh, an ordination for you. I've been ordained as a prophetess. We'll have an, or, an ordination for you and, 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 and present you to the, to, to the church as, as the prophet, as the apostle, whatever it is that you're calling is. Yes, that, that, that will happen here in the earth but i'm here to tell you tonight it is god that has chosen it is god that chooses us it's not somebody recognizes you have a gift and then they choose you and then you start to work god has chosen you so it's time for us to move forward in our purpose and it's time for you all to move forward in your purpose it's time for all of us move forward on purpose and move forward in your purpose. Can I get somebody to just say that tonight? Say tonight, I am moving forward in my purpose. I'm moving forward on purpose and I'm moving forward in my purpose. I want to I want to share a little story with you all tonight. Um, a very famous uh, man that uh, most there's nobody in this world that could tell me that they don't know who this is. But I'm here to talk to you tonight just briefly on Colonel. Harlan Sanders. He was born in 1890 in Henryville, Indiana. And I'm talking about moving forward on purpose and in your purpose to advance the kingdom of God. At age six, his dad passed away, leaving him to help his mother care for six siblings. He grew up and enlisted in the military, worked several jobs from conductor, blacksmith, and, and a boat operator. He was discharged from the military for insubordination. He became an insurance salesman, moved back in with his mother. At age 40, he started making and selling chicken and lemonade. He tried several times to sell this recipe. He was rejected 1,009 times before this recipe was accepted. At age 64, he opened his first Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel Sanders died at age 90. At that time, his net worth was 3.5 million. Um, around 2013, his net worth was about 15 billion, even in death. And this famous Kentucky Fried Chicken is in over 18,000 locations in over 118 countries. Many of us are called into business, but Colonel Sanders was chosen. But he had to work his gifts. Come on, go there with me in the spirit. He had to work his gifts. He had to start somewhere to run his race. If he had ran from his calling, the world would never have known about the famous finger licking chicken. They would never have known about this or even had the chance to taste this finger licking chicken. In the workforce, pretty much the same. There are CEOs, there are CFOs, there are presidents, there are VP, directors, executives, there are department heads, there are managers, senior employees, standard employees. There are people that work as clerks, mailroom, janitors, and parking attendants. Let me tell you all, not everyone at the top not all the CEOs that you see at the top started at the top. They had to work the position. They had to show up well on the job. They had to make the company profitable. They had to, you know, have great annual reviews. They had to come with a polished resume so that they can interview for the position and be ready to be advanced. In the work world, this is how it works. But when God chooses you, as Matthew 22 verses 14 tells us, for many are called, but few are chosen. When God chooses you, he'll skip over some people. He'll skip over some places. He will skip over some things just to get to you. Just to get to you. Carleen Schuler and Yvette Lewis, God has skipped over many things, many people, many places in your lives just to get to you. God is no respect of person. 
And that's why his word says that he gave some prophets, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God is not concerned if you go to church on Sunday, every Sunday, he's not concerned that he's going to skip over everyone in your row and choose you. If it's your time, it's your time. It is you he chose. Not the rest of the people that are in the in, in the pew. God is not concerned if the person, if all the people that's on your row has been serving in ministry with you and they've been serving longer than you. He's not concerned about that because he's concerned about those that he chose. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's not concerned about us. But when God has chosen us, no matter what we do, he is coming to find us, is what I want to say. He is coming to find you because he chose you. And no matter what you try to do, just as, as, I'm, as I'm speaking right now, I am, I'm reminded of, of the, the prodigal son. Listen, he could have asked for his father's money. He could have he could have taken it and squandered it. He he was living in a pig pen eating with pigs. But guess what? He was chosen. And that's why he, he after laying in a pig pen eating what pigs eat, there was an awakening that took place in that in that young man's spirit. Because guess what? If God hadn't chosen him, God could have just left him there to, 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 to die in his disobedience. But he chose him. And there was an awakening that took place in him and he got up and went back home. We didn't, we, we, the, the story ends in the feast and all that stuff, but we, we don't really know what happened to that young man after we have to, you know, we, we got to use our imagination or, or, or ask God to give us some form of revelation concerning that young man. And, and, and I, and I, I dare to believe that, that good came out of him because he didn't just wake up out, out of out of slumber, wake up out of a pig pen to come home to his father to just be nothing. He was chosen. And God is saying tonight, many are called, but few are chosen. I chose you tonight is what God is saying. So he's not concerned about everybody in your role. It's you he called. He's not concerned about they've been serving longer than you. It's you that he called. He's not concerned that Sister Susie or Brother 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 B can can warfare prayer more violent than you can. And all you know is our Father, because God has placed something inside of you. You might only know how to say our Father right now, but trust me, God has placed something inside of you because He has chosen you, and there's going to be an awakening in you. But you have to be able to say yes to God. God is not concerned that um that everybody else is laying hands in the church and you've never laid hands. He has chosen you. He's not concerned that 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 everybody can teach Bible study, but you can. It is you that He chose. So He is concerned about you. He's not concerned that you've never gone to the prison. And, and evangelize. He's not concerned about that because it is you that he chose and he's going to teach you every single thing that you know. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you can't use these things that, as excuses as to why you have not yet answered the call. You can't, you can't say, oh, oh, um, but God, um, they've been doing altar ministry longer than I, I have. And I, I really don't know what to do when I, when I'm on the altar. No, that, that's inexcusable. God chose you. It is for you to say yes. You can't say, oh God, they've been preaching um, longer than I have. And, 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 and I don't know, I don't know what to say. And, and I don't know the art of preaching. Listen, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to teach you how to preach. If God says it is you that he has called to preach, then, then there's a word in your belly. I am, I, listen, men and women of God that can hear my voice right now. Hallelujah. I am telling you this as passionately as I, as I, as I possibly can, because I was right where you are right now. God has chosen you. God has called you. He has chosen you. He has set you apart, but you are not doing what he has called you to do because you're letting fear get the best of you. Fear is not of God. You're telling God, God, um, um, I don't know how to cast out demons. It's not for you to know. It's for you to be obedient and to follow the instructions. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
Now, somebody else will tell you, you need to go to training school. And I don't object to any training. But I'm trying to tell you, it is God that chooses us. So we can't use these excuses because it's time for us to advance his kingdom. It's time for us to do altar ministry. It's time for us to evangelize. It's time for us to lay hands. It's time for us to teach the Bible. It's time for us to warfare. It's time for you to prophesy. God has given you a word. God has given you dreams. God has spoken to you and you hear his voice. You just get it confused with everything else because you're letting too many things get into your ear gates. It's time for you to clog those ears and listen to what your father is saying because there's a word in your belly that somebody is waiting to hear that word there's a word in your belly young man somebody's waiting for that word another brother will die if he doesn't get that word there's a word in your belly you're telling god god you know, I, 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 I don't know how to set up a church. I, I don't know how to establish order like everybody else does. Stop trying to be like everybody else and be who God has called you to be. You don't want to be like everybody else. Do you, do you want to, you, do you think, do you think Dunkin' Donuts, let me just use that. Do you think Dunkin' Donuts would have approved if Starbucks had opened Starbucks, named it Starbucks, but sell Dunkin' Donuts coffee? No. God doesn't want you to be like everybody else. He wants you to be authentic and be yourself. Your anointing is completely different to what everybody else is carrying. Everybody has a measure. God wants us to operate in our measure that he has given to us. So even though, hallelujah, they may be, they may be, or they may appear to be more qualified for the advancement when it's time for your advancement let me tell you the god that we serve he will he will go to the back row in the church where you are sitting and hiding hey jesus hey and he will move you uh, and advance you once you yield and say yes god will go into the parking lot where that parking attendant thinks that all he or she can do is navigate cars and park cars uh, for the ministry no uh, i i almost said the devil is a liar but i am gonna say the devil is a liar because the devil wants to rob you of the anointing that is in you man of god there's nothing wrong with parking cars uh, there's nothing wrong with parking cars at the church uh, because all of us uh, have to do something in the church all of us need to be doing something something in the church that everybody one person can't do everything so all of us have to be doing something but there is an anointing that is on you i'm seeing you right now and, and god is showing me your stomach area there is an anointing that you carry hallelujah there's an anointing that you carry and god is waiting for you to play catch up he's waiting for you to say yes he's waiting to say god hey ah, god I, I yield to you god god i god god the word that you have put in my belly I am ready God God I hear you God God I'm uncomfortable God when you come at night God and you come in my sleep and, and I have these dreams and I'm uncomfortable now because I know it's you calling me and I'm ready to say yes oh God listen man of God you that are out there parking cars hallelujah Jesus, there's an anointing that is in your belly that God has chosen you. You will still be able to park cars, but it's time to open up your mouth. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord says, I will find a replacement for parking those cars. Hallelujah, Jesus. God says, I've qualified you. Ah, you don't need a resume. You don't need a resume. You don't need a polished resume. You don't even need a recommendation. God says, I have qualified you. Jesus. Ah, uh, you carry the gift. Adaboshanda. All you have to do, people of God, is say yes. All you have to do is answer to the call because you carry the gift. I know this from experience. Mm. See, you're not the only person that's been running. Because I ran for years. I was just like Moses, running. Running in the back. 
Ah, running away from everything that God had called me to do because I kept measuring myself um, to other people and 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 measure and and I and I I would let my my past sins get in the way and I would say, Mighty God, um, there's no way that God could use me after I have abused um what He has given to me and I have abused Mighty God, I have abused my my body and I have I have done things in my life uh that 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 that, that doesn't qualify me to be a prophetess. But let me tell you tonight, uh, Hallelujah. I was a prophetess before he placed me in my mother's womb. He played when he placed me there. I was prophetess. When God placed you in your mother's womb, you were already prophetess. You were already prophet. You were already uh, evangelist. You were already apostle. You were already pastor. You were already anointed. That's what the word of the Lord says to us. So I know this from experience. I know what it is to run. Uh, I know what it is to wake up in the middle of the night, uh, in cold sweat or, or just, or just streaming wet from a dream that God gave to me, mighty God, that if I don't come, what he will do to me because God, hey, let me tell you, even though he chose you and he is waiting for you to come, um, don't, don't test God's patience. Don't let God have to wait on you because when he has to come for you by force or by fire, you will not like it. So God began, Ah, God began to show me in my dreams what he would do to me if I didn't come. Ah, Jesus. And I know that there's somebody under the sound of my voice tonight that, that know that God is calling you. Jesus, that God has been calling you and you've been disobedient. You've been neglectful huh? and you've not answered because you're worried about what everybody else is going to say. And trust me, I used to worry about what my friends are going to say. Uh, never would I think I would be on social media preaching and speaking in tongues because I was so vain. I wouldn't want anybody to know that tongues was in my belly. And I wouldn't come out here and be live on, on Facebook. And the only reason why that you're not seeing my, 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 my face yet, those of you that could see the live out there on social media, the only reason I have not allowed my face, even though you know what my picture looks like, I've not allowed my face to be out there is because because when I'm under the anointed, it is not cute. I, I, I don't come, I don't come here to be cute because God didn't send me to be cute. I'm not cute right now. And, 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 and truth be told, if you all were to get a glimpse of what takes place in the background, it might scare some of you that don't understand anointing hard sheets. That's a, because when, when God begins to, to flow, it's a, it's a radical thing that takes place here. But I'm saying this to say, I, w I would never, I would never do this. My flesh would never do this. I would, I would be happy running away from God. I would, I would be happy just continuing to run. Ah, uh, because sin is sweet and we don't want to conform. Ah, to the word of God. Sin is sweet. We, we, we just, we just want to do whatever we want to do, knowing that God has called us and knowing that he has appointed us and knowing that he has anointed us, knowing that God needs us to advance his kingdom here in the earth. If we don't do it, who else is going to do it? God needs you. Ah, aren't you excited that God needs you? So I know this from experience. How it, how it, how it is to carry a gift and what it is to run. Because you don't want nobody to know that you are anointed. Mm, so you muzzle it. You don't want nobody to know that you even carried. I'm, I'm telling you, all, I didn't, sometimes I didn't. Even, uh, and sometimes I still get like that. If I go somewhere, I don't want anybody to know who I am or, or my title. I don't want because I know they're going to call on me to pray. They're going to call. They put people love to pull on anointing. And sometimes I just want to go somewhere and sit and, 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 and just, just, just be, just be poured into really and truly just be poured into. But, but, but <laughs> uh, truth be told, somebody will recognize who you are. And somebody will recognize your anointing and you're not always going to get to rest. So sometimes I don't like people to know I am prophetess. No, I, I, I just want to sit down. I don't want to pray. I just want to sit down. I don't want to get the microphone. I just want to sit down. So people of God, I know what it is to run. I know what it is to run before I accept it. And I know what it is to run even while I have accepted. 
because sometimes I just want to sit down. But and then I have to tell I have to I have to heed to what the spirit of the Lord is saying to me, because even though I want to sit down and I want to be poured into God has somebody in that room that what I have in me is for that person and God is saying that it's time for us to stop running from our assignments it's time for us to stop running from what he has called us to do it's time for us to say yes and advance the kingdom of heaven the word of God says I knew you before you were in your mother's womb meaning God gave us these gifts in advance so now it's time for you to advance in your calling because he needs you to advance his kingdom. First Timothy chapter four, verses 12 and 14, it says, neglect not the gift that is in thee. I'm going to pause right there. Let you think about that for a, a few seconds. Hallelujah. How dare us. We have a God that wakes us up every morning and morning by morning, new mercy we see. You hear my breath right now? You hear that? That is the breath of God. It is only God that can cause breath to come out of this body and come through these nostrils. It is only God. And how dare us know that Yahweh gives us this privilege to breathe every day and to wake up every day. And we wake up and we neglect the gift that he has given to us. The Bible tells us, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yvette Lewis, neglect not the gift that is in you. Glena or Glenna Stevenson, neglect not the gift that is in you. Bernisa Hansen, neglect not the gift that is in you. Dorville Oliver, neglect not the gift that is in you. Carlene Schuller, neglect not the gift that is in you. Neglect not the gift which was given me by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Most of us have gifts that has laid dormant and needs to be unlocked. Mine was locked up for 40 years. I'm now 52 this year. Can you imagine? Mighty God. 40 years. The gift will come. The gift never went anywhere. Let me just... Let me, let, me, let me just clear that up. It never went anywhere. I would suppress the gift. I will not heed to the calling. I will reject the gift. I will sin against the gift and the anointing. And I was, it was locked up in me for 40 years. But glory to God, right now I'm in my 12th year of spiritual advancement and awakening. And because... The reason why I'm here tonight is because I answered the call. I answered the chosen call. See, the woman at the well had to come out of her adultery to advance in her spiritual life. When you come in contact with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he'll show you who you are. She never said, I'm an adulterer, so I can't evangelize. She never gave Jesus that excuse. She just went the woman with the issue of blood had to crawl to touch the hem of his garments she had to do that to advance in her health she never said i'm too weak or too sick or too unclean and that no one will listen to me she just went esther had to go through months of purification and beautification it's a process that she had to go through just to advance so that she can now be worthy to be in the presence of the king. But that wasn't all. Esther and all her people had to fast for three days, even babies and animals, just to save her people from being slaughtered. In the end, they all advanced. She never said, oh, I'm just an orphan. God can't use me. She said, if I perish, I perish, but I am going to see the king. David was, uh, was outside tending the animals, minding his business as a shepherd. All along, he was in preparation and didn't know it, but he was called. He was chosen. 
And on that same day, he was anointed. Because David said yes, he slayed the giant and eventually became a king. He never said, oh, I'm just a shepherd boy with a slingshot. He just went. The Lord is saying tonight, my brothers and my sisters, the church has become contaminated and the church has become polluted. The Lord is saying, I'm ready to return. But if I return now, so many will be lost. So many will be lost and it's not his desire for us to be lost. He says to tell my people that it's time for us to advance the kingdom of God. The only way, people of God, that we can advance his kingdom is to begin to operate in our gifts. Stop, stop, stop telling, stop letting people tell you that you are gifted, you, you're anointed, God has called you to do this, God has called you to do that. And then you just take the prophecy and you do nothing about it. Come on now. Why are we walking around so gifted and so full of anointed, so full of anointing, and we're not saying yes? He says, the only way to advance my kingdom is to operate, to begin to operate in your gifts and walk upright in your calling. Listen, the Lord, the Lord said to me, do you know that witches, huh, witches and warlocks, they're out there advancing the kingdom of darkness. How are they doing that? Day and night. They out there casting spells and they don't stop praying. And they don't stop fasting. And they know who they are. They know who they are. They know what they've been chosen for. They know their position. They know their rank. They don't, they, they will not do past their rank. They will not do beneath their rank. They stay in their lane. They know who called them and they know what their job is. And they work their job daily. But, but but us, we walk around muzzling the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost wants to take control of us. The Holy Ghost wants to speak. Ah, The Holy Ghost has a lot to say out of so many of us. And we won't open up our mouth and we won't speak. Every day we wake up and we muzzle the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of us. And God says it's time for us to advance. His kingdom is time for us to open up our mouth and let the Holy Ghost speak. You won't prophesy and I called you to prophesy. You won't preach and I called you to preach. You won't pastor. You won't shepherd the sheep. You won't establish order but I called you you won't win souls you won't evangelize but it is you that I have chosen you just sit on my gifts that I have given to you how long will you sit on my gifts saith the Lord how long are you going to sit on my gifts I gave you those gifts you didn't give them to yourself Jesus I gave you those gifts the Lord says, I'm the only one that can spiritually advance you for I have called you and it is I who chose you. But you must make up in your mind that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm saying yes today. Will you say yes? God says, anything that is not pleasing in his sight, stop it now. Stop it right now. You can stop it. Yes. You can walk away from that adulterous relationship. You can walk away from that fornicative relationship. You can walk away from that promiscuity. You can walk away from stealing. You can walk away right now from that abusive husband or that abusive wife. You can walk away right now. Anything that's not pleasing in his sight, even if it's your mouth that's not pleasing in his sight, you can cut off that filthy tongue because there was nobody that could cuss like I used to cuss and now I use this mouth that God has given me to prophesy because I decided to say yes to God I decided to say yes time is at hand people of God the hour soon cometh for his return 
Yes, you keep hearing that every day. <laughs> but B, <laughs> call yourself blessed that you live another day to say that God is coming. Because you might not see tomorrow. You might not even see midnight. Say yes now. When you're chosen, you have to come out from among them. You cannot stay with the same people. Listen, I have a lot of friends that wonder, wow, I, I, I don't hear from Carol. She doesn't call. She doesn't come by. You know, we invite her to stuff. She doesn't come. Some people now just won't invite me anymore because they know I'm not coming or um, they don't. They don't want to have to be prim and proper in front of me or to say, oh, excuse me, or I'm so sorry, or I didn't mean to swear, or I didn't mean to say that. They know they don't want to be uncomfortable in front of me. So I'm just uninvited, and I'm okay being uninvited because I said yes. So when you are ready to say yes, when you give God your yes, you cannot stay in the same place. Don't, don't, don't think you can keep the same friends and, 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 and your friends have not changed and you think you can hang around that same spirit. The devil is a liar. It's a spirit that, that, that we are spirits. We are spirits, right? That our, our outer shell is, is flesh. A spirit is inside of us. And whatever you feed this spirit is what is going to come out of the spirit. So guess what? As saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost that I am right now, if I go and I sit in a place where I don't belong, guess what? That spirit begins to attach itself to me. And then I will start to dummy down things and water down things and uh, and, and, and make excuses for sin and, and, and all the other stuff. We, 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 we no longer like, oh, that's, that's wrong and there's no way I could do this. The spirit begins to suppress you because you are feeding your soul that negative spirit, that spirit that's, if it's, it, it, let, let me just think of one. You are married. You have said yes to God. But all of your girlfriends are adulterers and you are always in their midst. What do you think is going to follow you? The spirit of adultery will follow you. Next thing you know, your good marriage that you've had all these years, you now are considering cheating on your husband or cheating on your wife. That's because you've been where there are familiar spirits. So now it's attached to you. And that's why the Bible tells us to come out from among them and be separated. We have to die to ourselves. We got to come all the way out. It's not halfway. Die to yourself. Guess what? Your best friend should not be the reason why you didn't, why you didn't make it to heaven. No, my best friend, she knows better. She will not be the reason I didn't make it to heaven, honey. No, 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 no. I'm making it to heaven. And that's what you have to tell yourself. You got to tell yourself, I am going to die to myself and I'm coming all the way out. I want somebody to shout that out. I am going to die to myself and I'm coming all the way out. To advance my kingdom, you have, you must first come out of sin. Unsaved, come to Jesus. Saved, get off the fence. Choose your master. Come out of adultery. Walk out from that, that lover's bed. Put fornication down. Stop using protection and, and use abstinence. That's what you need to use. Those of you that are out there fornicating and, 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 and using protection, stop using protection. Use abstinence. Don't do it, period. Get rid of all the toys that are in your drawers and in your closet. You're, you're grown adults. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Come out of homosexuality. Cover up yourself. Stop speaking the world. Stop seeking the world and, and seek what your father in heaven is all about. Be holy and righteous. Stop lying. Stop stealing. It's time for us to repent. We need to establish a prayer life and eat God's word daily. That's how we're going to advance the kingdom. I know some of you all are probably saying, well, who does she think she is? But let me tell you, I am qualified to speak to you like this because I'm a very transparent prophet. 
I qualify to speak to you like this because I was once you. I was once that adulterer and still in the church. Yeah. Yeah. I was at the abortion clinic and still at the church. I'm not proud of these things. These are my testimony. And I will testify everywhere I go, whether you like them or not. But these are my testimony. And I need people to know that they can come out of darkness and that when God has chosen them, that no matter how they run, they will not be able to hide. And it's time for us to come out of the things that we are so familiar with or let go of our past sin. Stop letting your past sin keep you from working and, 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 and advancing God's kingdom. I stole from my job and I was still in church. I had that lying tongue and I was still in church singing in the choir. I was fornicating at one time and I'm st I was still in the choir and still in church. I was the one that was on in the club on Saturday nights and I'm ushering at the door on Sunday morning. Sometimes I didn't even get over the buzz that I had in the club, but I'm at the door because I knew I had to be in church. So God can save me all over again. Women and men of God, I am not here to tell you that, that I'm happy that this was my life. Do I have regrets? Yes, of course I'm going to have regrets. It was sin. But guess what? I thank God that the scripture says many, many are called, but a few are chosen. And God gave me that vantage point. He chose me. I didn't choose myself. Because if I had anything to do with this, I might still be in the club at, at 52 years old. Because you know, when you're in sin, you're in darkness. So you don't, you, some of us don't realize that we're old and we're, and we're, we're getting old and we need to come out of the clubs. We need to, we need to just stay home and, and, and sit down somewhere. We don't realize that because we're in darkness. So we think that this is the way of life. But God opened my eyes. And he can open your eyes too. In order for me to fully operate in my gifts and be the prophetess that is before you, I had to come out from among them and I had to be separated. And it was only when I did that, I began to advance the kingdom of God. It first started off just praying. It, then it, 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 it was giving encouragement. Then it was... Um, counseling, then it was a prayer line and now I'm on the radio. What am I doing? I am advancing the kingdom of God using the gifts that God has given me. Now it's not the time for you to measure yourself against anyone. It's not the time for you to say, you know, I can't do all what my forerunners um, are doing. I used to question God at one time and God told me, listen, you will never be Dr. Bynum, nor will you be Dr. Trim. And the reason why is because he, I only made one of them. And I only made one of you, Carol. God said, Carol, when I placed you in your mother's womb, I placed you with an advancement date and your God-given name. When you open your mouth, it's no longer Carol Valerie Galloway, but it's prophetess. Just because I said yes. And I'm here to tell somebody tonight. God has put, placed you in your mother's womb and he gave you an advancement date. And it's time for you to advance the kingdom of God. It's time for you to walk in your God-given calling. Walk and operate in your God-given name. Say yes to God today. Do you know your assignment on the earth in my closing? How much longer will you operate in your birth given name? Will you let God change your name today? God changed Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah, Jacob to Israel, Saul to Paul, just to name a few. God is the name changer. When, he ch when you say yes, I'm ready to advance the kingdom, God will change your name. Is your advancement date today? Who's going to be speaking when you open your mouth? Is it going to be you? Or is it going to be prophetess, apostle, preacher, minister? Are you ready to advance God's kingdom? What is going to be your new name? These are things that I want you to just 
ask yourself, and I'm going to say them over in case you're taking notes, is your advancement date today? Talk to God. He's waiting. What is your new name? Who is speaking when you open your mouth? Are you ready to advance God's kingdom today? It's time for us all to advance the kingdom of heaven. We all have a part to play. And it's time for us to advance the kingdom of heaven. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now. God, I bless your name, Father. I give you praise and I give you honor. I glorify your name. I thank you, Lord God, for everyone that's on this line tonight, those that will hear this futuristically, Father. God, I thank you, God, that they will say yes. I thank you, God, that when they begin to open their mouth, it will no longer be the earth birth name, but it will be the heavenly name. I thank you, God, that the power of the Holy Ghost has fell on somebody tonight. Ah, Jesus. Oh, God, I bless you. I thank you, God, that the power of the Holy Ghost has fell on a woman tonight. I see you right now. You're, you're laid out on the floor. You're on white tile. Laid out in the spirit. Hallelujah. Something hit your belly tonight. And you said, yes. Yeah. Mighty God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. God, I thank you for that woman tonight. I thank you, Lord God, for that man of God that said, hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, I'm parking the cars right now, but I hear you, God, and I'm not going to run anymore. I am going to advance your kingdom. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to advance your kingdom. I'm going to say yes tonight. I'm going to answer the call tonight, Father. Ah, Thank you, Father. God, I thank you for that young man that still doesn't know God he knows that he's on fire for you yeah, he feels the anointing in his belly God hallelujah you are young man you can even feel the fire of God in your hand but you you don't quite know who you are yet hallelujah hallelujah God is going to send you a ministering angel thank you God he'll send one in the spirit and he will send one in the natural that will be able to help you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Help you to, con to not, not to contain that anointing because we don't want it contained. We want it to come out. But to be able to control what you are feeling, to understand what, what's taking place. First, the Holy Spirit has to impart in you. The Holy Spirit has to come and minister to you, which is that ministering angel in the spirit. And after that, a natural, a natural father is going to come and minister to you. Hallelujah, Father God. I bless your name. Because I see fire right now in your hands. Hallelujah. Fire in your hands right now. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Your last name is Winslow. Winslow. W-I-N-S-L-O-W. Winslow. Yes. Winslow. Winslow, it's time. Mm -hmm. You are 17 years old. That's your, that's your last name. And you're 17 years old. I could see you. And it's time. It's time. You don't understand everything. But after your visit, you will begin to understand. You will, you will see clearer. You will understand. When the unction comes on you, you will know what to do in the natural. Because that's where you're struggling. You get the unction. And you don't know what to do because it's like, it's like somebody just shot you with power. And you don't know what to do with the power that's in your belly. You don't know what to do with what's, what you feel. In, uh, come in what you feel in your mouth because you feel it first it's on your tongue and then when you eh Jesus when you release it take a fire that comes out of your mouth but you don't know where to attack it's like it's it's you you're because you're so young mm, you're so young you don't know what to attack 
because it, 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 it comes on you so heavy. You don't know. You don't know what to do with that power. Jesus. God says, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. Young Winslow. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to teach you. Glory to Shanda. I'm going to teach you. I see you laying hands, Winslow. Somebody's dead. Dead. That person's dead. And the power that God has given you is going to cause that person to come back alive. Somebody needs to find this Mr. Winslow. Young man, 17. Somebody knows that man, that young man. Somebody needs to find him. Hallelujah. God is going to visit him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hope I hear about you. I truly do. I hope I hear about you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of Yeshua. Thank you, Father. I just want to check really quickly to see if there's anybody. Hallelujah. That has a prayer request. Hallelujah. It's 8.03. If I can just be given another five minutes, hallelujah. Um, send, I, I need to know if you, if you want me to pray. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight, I pray tonight for Yvette Lewis. I come against that headache right now. Woman of God, just touch your two, your two temples. I come against that headache right now. I command that headache right now to shut up. Shut up right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua. I command that headache right now to stop, to cease. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I decree and I declare that you are healed right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua, headache, go. In the name of Yeshua, headache, go. In the name of Yeshua, headache, go. Now, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I decree and I declare tonight that every infirmity that comes to plague you, die right now. In the mighty name of Yeshua. God, I thank you for your people tonight. I bless your name, God. I don't see any other prayer request that's coming in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't see any other prayer request, but tonight I'm just going to touch and agree with all of you, Carlene Shula. Tonight I pray over you right now and I cover you under the blood of Yeshua. I cover every part of your body and I speak to every ailment that's in that body right now and I command it to go and die by fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Yeshua. Tonight I pray for Glenna, for Glenna, um, Stevenson, in the mighty name of Yeshua, God, I pray tonight, God, that you will cover her under the blood of Yeshua. I pray right now, Father God, that you will supply all of her needs. God, God, you know her needs as to why she's on the line tonight. So I pray tonight, God, that you will do it for her in the mighty name of Yeshua. Is your hand waxed short? No, it is not, Lord God. So God, I pray tonight that you will just do whatever it is my sister needs, Father, whatever she is seeking for tonight, Lord God, that you will show up like the Russian might mighty wind that you are. God, I speak a suddenly right now for Sister Bernisa Hansen. A suddenly, God, like on the Damascus Road, God, I speak a suddenly in her life right now. God, whatever she is waiting on, Father, the answer, God, that Sister Bernisa Hansen is waiting on, I speak a suddenly in the mighty name of Yeshua. God, I cover called out gospel radio. I cover Derville Oliver. I cover Father God, his wife and his family in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father, we cover them under the blood. I speak your precious Holy Ghost God. Always be with them, God. Be their guide and their protector. I come against every demonic force uh, that will try to shut this down, that will try to come and speak uh, over their their over their ministry, that will try to come up against their ministry. We command the sword of God tonight uh, to break and destroy your tactics uh, and break and destroy your plans in the mighty name of Yeshua. Father, I pray for Danity Chambers tonight. I pray your glory, Father God, to be upon her. 
in the name of Yeshua. God, I pray tonight that you will expose her and use her for your glory. I pray tonight, God, as she says, yes, God, that you will use her and explode, expose her for your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua. God, I speak, Father God, uh, unto Cornell Ward tonight. God, I pray, God, that you will cover her under your blood, cover her family, God. God, nothing shall come nigh their dwelling. No harm shall come nigh their dwelling, Father. Father God, because you have given the angels charge over her, Lord God. So I pray, God, that you will continue to cover, 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 cover with your precious blood in the mighty name of Yeshua, God. God, I thank you for everyone that has tuned in tonight. God, I pray right now for everyone in the Ark of God Deliverance Ministry, Father. I pray, God, that you will continue to cover them, cover those on the PG Restoration Ministry, Father. God, that, God, that you will just supply all our needs, like supply their needs right now, Father. God, everything, God, that they need, everything that they have lifted up to you, God, every sacrifice, God, that they've given, Father. God, I pray, God, that you will return it a thousandfold, God. Bless us, God. Enlarge our territory. Bless us all tonight. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. People of God, make sure to tune in next week at 8 p.m. for Monday Night Prophetic Glory right here on Called Out Gospel Radio. I am your host, Prophetess Carol Galloway. I thank each and every one of you all for being here tonight. If you have any prayer requests, even after I have closed tonight and you want to send those in to the radio station, you can do that by texting 876-868-5109. God bless each and every one of you. Shalom. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Monday night prophetic glory, breakthrough, healing and deliverance with Prophetess Carol Galloway every Monday night at 8 p.m. right here on...